Hello Retro Fans. Welcome to a new episode of C64 Customs. And as you can see, uh, I'm a little bit busy because I have to play the newest game from Richard Bayless, aka The New Dimension. And it's called it Let's Invade 2. And this is indeed the most fanciest and um, spaciest and uh, I don't know, freakiest Space Invader game I have ever played in my whole life. And um, as you can see, it is really very colorful, very flashy. Uh, it reminds me a lot of um, Crackout, Crackout 2, because uh, of the background which is uh, kind of changing all the time and uh, it has a very nice pumping soundtrack it's fantastic it's really so weird oops got stuck somewhere and um, i wouldn't wonder to hear this as the new start song of the mega avalanche in uh, alp 2 s uh, because it's very similar but anyway it's indeed a fantastic release and you can get this from uh, Richard Bailey's uh, web page as usual and uh, it is available in very different formats so I'm playing the cartridge version right now but you can download the disc image as well as well as a tape image so you can even put this on your taperino or put this on a real tape and uh, enjoy this typical Richard Bailey's uh, game tape release version loader music thingy whatsoever anyway uh, looks like i better finish what i'm doing here right now and uh, focus on what we are talking about today and as a very first thing i'm going to show you that uh, what i'm doing here right now I'm not playing the game on uh, real C64. I'm playing this on the Turbo Chameleon in standalone mode in conjunction with my Commodore CTTV remote control. Because the main purpose of this episode is to test the new Mini Mega Mega core for the Turbo Chameleon version 2. That's important. Uh, because it promised to have a much better CDTV support than the previous core. And, um, well, let's have a look if this is going to be true. But um, as a very first thing, um, I'm going to kind of explain the setup um, just in a kind of brief manner. So as you can see, the Turbo Chameleon is running in uh, standalone mode. It's connected uh, via VGA to my uh, Gainer HDMI converter. And this is fed into my recording setup and uh, this has kind of caused a lot of headaches because this is a very uncommon um, scenario for my recordings. So I had to create a whole new set of um, scenes, a new profile. I have to use a different sound routing because the now the sound routing is coming from the Turbo Chameleon and it's not going to feed into the... Um, XRGB Frame Meister Mini and um, therefore yeah I spent some time getting all that thing sorted and uh, basically now it's working quite fine and the interesting thing if we're going to jump back to the C64 view and uh, let's step out of the game even if it's so good and we should get a reset performed. No, no reset. Then uh, let's jump into the Turbo Chameleon screen. And as you can see on the top of the screen, I have enabled the uh, VGA overlay. And here we can see a couple of things going on on the Turbo Chameleon. But the most important, or let's say the most interesting information is on the top hand, top right hand side. And that's a percentage showing at which CPU speed uh, C64 core is running right now. And uh, I'm testing a new Turbo Chameleon core that's kind of a 
beta of the current beta version and it has a couple of improvements in terms of um, turbo optimization and um, this is mainly located in the area of oops sorry <laughs> that's basically uh, located in the area of um, the IDE slowdown or the I I IEC slowdown uh, because this is required to load disk image uh, for example probably so um, in order to load something the C64 has to slow down to 100% to get the timing right and uh, the, the previous core was quite conservative in this manner and uh, so uh, for games that were kind of loading a lot you had um, not the full let's say turbo power and this has been improved right now and uh, some other optimizations and uh, basically as I'm saying this is kind of a more release candidate better better version I don't know which I got for testing purpose and I hope that this is going to be released well pretty soon and that's very interesting and um, this is the new Mini Mega Mega Core. It has the very same name. So basically, we just have to kind of believe that this is really something new. And uh, it's basically very interesting that this core supports the remote control even better than the previous core. So, as far as I remember, the previous core wasn't really uh, using the remote control at all. And uh, here we now have the chance to mount our disk image using the remote control. So basically we do not need uh, keyboards that much anymore. And uh, let's just jump into one game to see if everything is working fine. Uh, we now just have to... Press space or press a mouse button. Ah, okay, so it looks like we still need a keyboard for certain um, intros. So we are not totally keyboard free right now. Um, although the CDT file has a lot of um, additional keys, and uh, it would be nice uh, if we get uh, space and Ender at least uh, implemented in the Minimic Amiga core so that this whole thing is um, more or less usable uh, without a keyboard at all uh, because most of the games or well yeah maybe basically most of the games are running pretty fine uh, with just a remote control but if we have a scene like this where we have um, to enter a cheat code or something like this uh, well this is kind of cracked so we just have to press fire so everything is fine but uh, I got the Lotus uh, 3 release where I have to press enter and unfortunately the enter key on the remote control isn't working. So this is something I really wish uh, get implemented in the next release. Overall I have tested a couple of games, um, I've tested a couple of uh, demos. So I couldn't find any major differences in compatibility. So it looks like uh, the main core has remained the same but I'm looking forward to see some improvements here and there as well because I have a couple of things that aren't running very well on uh, the current core I'm not sure I have to admit whether this is perhaps a uh, workbench or whatever issue so perhaps I have to load a different ROM file or something like this in order to get this working but uh, basically now we can access this uh, Minimic menu where we can change the disks, where we can load save configurations, where we have additional chipsets, memory settings. And um, this is very interesting that we can change values here on the fly, which is perhaps not the best for a game while it's running. And uh, we can change the video settings <coughs> as well so we can Add some skin lines, for example, and uh, we got some 
additional filters. I don't know what they are doing right now. But um, last but not least, we can change uh, a lot of things here. But I was going to... The last menu here it is, yes. And here we can uh, jump back to uh, the Turbo Chameleon or we can perform a reset. And basically the Minimic should restart right now. So um, that's, interest that's indeed a very interesting thing. So let's get rid of the disk and uh, perform a reset so that we can jump into the workbench screen. And um, yeah, well, as you can see, I'm running on a standalone mode, so no C64 attached, so no joysticks for, well, the moment right now. Um, because I still have no docking station, that's one of the issues. But uh, I have tested a couple of games, like uh, stunt car racers and uh, what we have seen, uh, Lotus um, 2 and Lotus 3. And I played this with the remote control and uh, it plays mm, quite fine, so to say. And um, it's perhaps not um, as good as having a joystick. But um, if you don't want to have the whole setup, and if you do not have a dogging station or something like this, if you just want to have one relaxing game on your couch, then uh, that's probably a good idea just to go for the remote control. And as you can see, now we are stuck in the menu here because we have to type in a name and therefore we need a keyboard. And uh, I got the impression that the keyboard is working better than in the previous release. I had some issues that the keyboard kind of, um, well, disappeared every now and then. And I haven't um, seen this effect right now it is working fine so it's not a problem and uh, initially i thought it is a keyboard issue but in the c64 mode of the turbo chameleon the keyboard works quite fine so i had no issues there and uh, therefore it i assume it was some kind of uh, issue with uh, the minimic amiga core so the game is basically quite the same like on the c64 uh, it looks indeed a bit better and it runs a little bit more uh, smooth now obviously and uh, as you can see you can play this quite fine with our remote control and uh, I really like this because I'm well kind of lazy and if I just want to have a quick mega game then uh, I usually use the C6 uh, the CD default remote control oh a little bit fast jumped a bit too wide but uh, well we made it so one one well let's say um, important thing we kind of need a direct um, what uh, what how to say this uh, so the the turbo chameleon has to see oops the um, cdtv uh, in kind of an optical manner so if i put this under my desk or something like this it's not going to work but um, the ir connection is very robust very stable so i can point this in many directions and it's still working so it's not really required to point this at the turbo chameleon all the time but as I said, uh, they kind of need to see each other and then everything is working fine. So the same applies to the C64 mode. So I have tested a lot of things. So that's basically not a problem of the controller. It's more of the driver. And we jump even wider this time. Oops. Anyway. <laughs> But in the C64 mode, we have a couple of more uh, buttons supported. I think I shouldn't play and talk at the very same time, especially games like this. But anyway, so in the C64 mode, we got um, most of uh, all of the buttons uh, available to control our um, Turbo Chameleon core. 
And um, this is very comfortable because uh, it is really almost keyboardless, so we can really work on certain things on games and um, all that stuff without even attaching a keyboard to the Turbo Camille, which is pretty comfortable. But as I said, I'm very happy that this is working uh, with the remote control right now. So that's very fine. And um, that's a major step forward. So basically, I'm looking forward to the next course ported to the new Turbo Chameleon. There are a couple of things I'm really looking for. And um, basically, that's mm, mostly all of this episode so far. Let's briefly jump into the latest um, C64 core. And I, I gave it a different color so that I can kind of distinguish the both uh, cores I'm running here on the Turbo Camille right now. And uh, basically, it's a very comfortable thing. And um, nothing has changed so far. I mean, the whole operation is still the same and um, yes so we see some progress on the Turbo Chameleon version 2 topic and uh, that's really nice I'm really happy that um, this development um, is well kind of improving and that all those uh, things are working fine so far and especially that the standalone mode is um, really useful on a standard setup it requires the VGA connection, it requires, if you have an HDMI setup, it requires an HDMI converter. But um, they are, well, kind of cheap, so not, not so expensive, and this one works pretty fine. I have tested a couple of different um, resolutions and found that the standard 640 times 480 works kind of the best. So the others have some issues with the aspect ratio and all that things. But um, basically it is not that much information to convert and therefore 640 times 480 is really okay. And uh, yes, that's basically all for this episode. And uh, well, I'm going to test more stuff as soon as it is available. And um, I will kind of prepare a um, Turbo Chameleon Turbo special. So that's the main reason why I'm testing this new core, because we found a couple of things in the old or in the previous core that had some issues with some games, for example. And um, as soon as I got all that stuff sorted, I will talk about this topic as well. So basically, that's all for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. As usual, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, feel free to use the comment section. I will add um, links to the description section as far as I remember what was important for this episode, but um, basically that's going to be the case. And um, as usual, if you like this stuff, then please hit thumbs up if you want to follow the channel please just subscribe to the channel i highly appreciate this and um, anyway see you for the next episode bye bye